The hardest moment. Deep down, Harry is against Meghan, waiting for the royal reunion. Hello, friends. Welcome to Breaking Royal News about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News Version 2 channel. A mood of sadness, according to acquaintances, has settled upon the Sussex family, so Prince Harry's pleasure at returning to his home in Montecito for his son Archie's fourth birthday, just hours after his father's coronation ceremony on May 6th, was short-lived. The 38-year-old prince has been subjected to pages and pages of jubilant post-coronation media, including pictures of his most cherished loved ones in the globe, as well as the celebrations, speeches, family meals, and parties that followed King Charles III's dramatic coronation. Harry's close friends claim that he's not only experiencing post-coronation blues, he's definitely having trouble with this, according to a close buddy. Even though it was delightful to tuck a half-drooling Archie in that night, he has terrible regrets over his choice to leave the celebration so abruptly. He has been ruminating on what he missed out on for days at this point. Harry, like the rest of the family, had spent his whole life preparing for this historic event, and he is still in disbelief that he played anything more than the barest minimum in it. Without a doubt, it has been difficult to take. Apart from the fact that he was utterly excluded, the toughest aspect for Harry, according to sources, was seeing his brother, Prince William, take center stage in his father's world. Harry first believed he was being a good father by rushing back for Archie, but in hindsight, he is seeing that he might have given Archie the birthday of a lifetime by letting him ride in a carriage behind his grandpa king. The insider reveals Harry's inner turmoil. Harry's reevaluating his entire life right now and knows there's a great opportunity awaiting them back in the UK, but instead they're battling and trying to make it on their own. He no longer understands anything and being cut off from both families isn't helping. There is no way to predict if Charles would even consider it at this point but he is considering going to the king and asking him if there is a way back. I assume what's bothering Harry is that his dad and the dragon woman had a huge day. His brother was center stage, as was his sister-in-law. Even children got more fanfare than they will ever get again. His wife has signed up with a big agency. It's irking him that his place in the world has been laid bare, and it's been a very long drop for Harry. Harry doesn't give a flying fig about his son or being a good dad. What he can't tolerate is that no one is focused on him. He can blab about the greatest love story in the world, but the fact is that Harry hates that his wife is getting more attention than him. He went from spare in his family of origin to the spare in his marriage. He has become merely Mr. Markle, and that's where the gloom is coming from. He didn't want an independent go-getter wife. He wanted a pretty rabble-rouser to disrupt the royal family like he sees his mummy did, but expected her to walk behind him while he shone as the knight in shining armor on a great white steed. He just never expected that he would be forever caged in his wife's shadow. He thought he was picking up his mummy's mantle of bringing the royal family to heel, completing the work his mummy didn't get to finish. He thought he would always be the cheeky prince, but he asked to just be just Harry, and now that he's like any other Tom, Dick, and Harry, he can't stomach it. A British psychologist commented, I think he's got something very wrong with him that he is showing signs of, even as a kid, being mean to people who couldn't fight back. But I don't think he's a narcissist, because he's not good at acting like everything's fine when it isn't. Can't really be fake. He can lie and see things differently than they really are and he's an eternal victim. But when they've had a fight and she performs their we're so in love routine, he can't hide his sour expression like a narcissist would be able to. The small reason I know, but that's one thing I think he'd be better at if he were a narcissist. Here's what he did. He's triangulated his mother into many of his conflicts for decades, plus granny, just checking that she'd been taken care of, etc. Harry, on his own, is a douchebag. 
He brings in global faves, on his side of course, to pit the opposition as the bad guys. He can't win most of his arguments without bringing in Diana or Granny. He's incredibly self-centered and manipulative, but he doesn't have the narcissist's drive to triangulate others, to pit people against each other in order to control them. His wife does, but she's an amateur and can't play a long game. Besides, his biggest problems seem to be paranoia and some kind of cognitive dysfunction. The cognitive dysfunction connects to his lack of empathy, and the paranoia is linked to self-aggrandizing delusion. So, not in the same league as Meghan, he has other problems. A recent source said Harry is absolutely screwed in his lawsuit with the mirror. He is unlikely to win much because there is virtually no evidence of stories coming from phone hacking. But in going through the evidence, the real sources of stories will come out. Mark Boland, Charles Formick, PR man, has allegedly already been implicated in some stories. For Harry, this will be good news, as it will justify some of what he wrote in spare and get the sugars out whooping in force on his behalf and pouring more vitriol on Camilla. It may even tempt a few people to switch sides again and back to Harry, but it will further embitter his family against him. The bridges have already been torched. They are now chipping away at the landmass the bridges once stood on to widen the gulf further. It will be damaging to the royals as it will expose the machinations that go on between Buckingham Palace and the press. The more intelligent and mature parts of the population will accept that it is just typical of the PR that goes on in all walks of life, including politics and major corporations. And even if we dislike it, Buckingham Palace is not being uniquely dastardly. But more naive people will accuse the palace of dark arts, with no appreciation of the level of paid-for puff pieces, call your own paparazzi, and leaks via friends and staff that the Sussexes engage in while feigning innocence. The downside to Harry is that all the stories that he never wanted in the public domain in the first place will spew out again like sewage bubbling up through a drain cover in the peak of a storm. He will learn the hard way that sometimes it is better to just let things be and move on. In my view, it is a foolhardy quest that's going to damage the press, the royal family and the institution, and Harry too. And when it is done, he will have paid for the privilege with very little in damages to make it worthwhile. Once it is all over, the tabloids that he sued will probably unleash any other stories that they have suppressed, probably around the autumn time. Let's hope there are some juicy ones. What do you think about Harry's instability? Is he really regretting Megxit? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.